Good morning, Mountain View Baptist Church. Welcome to Sunday School on uh, May 3rd of the year 2020. And uh, we have a little bit of a different setup here. We're going to be starting uh, as this will be part one of our uh, Sunday School class today and be giving you a little bit of an overview of the tabernacle in the wilderness and uh, what it means for us. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 is where we're going to start and uh, just wanting to give you an overview here with this uh, video, the part one, and we'll be uh, looking at some pictures here and that a model that we have of the tabernacle so that you have a better understanding. And uh, people would say, well, that's all in the Old Testament. Well, if it's that's true, it's in the Old Testament and God gave it to us there, but it is a picture and type of what Christ Jesus has done. And in uh, Hebrews chapter nine, where we're gonna be start reading in verse one, and I'll just read verse verses 1 through 12, and then I'll read verses uh, 23 through 28. So Hebrews uh, chapter 9, in uh, verse 1, it begins, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. For where the tabernacle, uh, for there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant, overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubim of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now in verse 23, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 23, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time uh, without sin unto salvation. So this tabernacle uh, is, uh, was given in the Old Testament, so a way that man would have a understanding of how they approach uh, unto a holy God. With our sin, uh, we can't approach unto a holy God. Adam and Eve sinned, and uh, what they did was got the, uh, they were separated from God. This is uh, God's prescription for the cure, if you want to say it that way, so that we can approach 
approach unto him. Here's a, a, a book by Rose Publications that shows, you see the curtain around here, and then the courtyard inside, this would be the gate, and then you have the different coverings uh, over the uh, holy and most holy place. You'll notice that there is the brazen altar and the brazen laver, and I'll remove the overlays here so that you see it a little bit better. On the inside here then, uh, you have the lampstand, you have the table of showbread, and you have the uh, altar of incense, and then you'll see there's curtains there or the veil that is there, and behind that would be the uh, uh, mercy seat, which is the uh, Ark of the Covenant as the bottom part, and then the top part is a gold overlaid uh, lid, if you will, that has two cherubim on it, and that is the mercy seat. Uh, we'll look here uh, at the uh, inside of the uh, holy place. This would be the first room that you would enter into. You'll see the um, lampstand, and you'll see how it has uh, seven different uh, uh, places uh, where flame is, oil is in that, and the oil represents the Holy Spirit. And we'll go over those things uh, in part two a little bit more. Uh, you'll see here is the table of showbread. It has 12 unleavened loaves of bread, one um, one loaf of bread for each tribe of Israel. Even though one tribe's bigger than the other, it's still represented the same way here through the finished work of God through Jesus Christ. You'll see here is the altar of incense, uh, which represents prayer and intercession for others. And then you see the veil that is here. And uh, behind that veil is the uh, most holy place, and that is where the mercy seat is at. So we'll show you that. Here is the uh, Ark of the Covenant. Over it is the mercy seat with the cherubim on it. And we'll take this overlay and move. And you'll see down in the Ark of the Covenant uh, is the uh, rod of Aaron's that budded. Uh, you have the uh, container there with manna in it. And then also you have the two tables of stone that the Ten Commandments uh, were written on. And so that's an overview there. I'll turn this here a little bit. Just bear with us if the camera shakes a little bit. And here you'll see a, a small model. Uh, but once again, you have the uh, gate. That's the only entrance into it. You must come through that gate, in and out through that gate. You don't get in any other way. You'll see the fence, if you will, around it, which is a curtain. And uh, you have to come in from outside of the world, and you must come in this gate. And the first thing that you see, see down here, is the most holy place, and that's where the mercy seat's at. That's where God is. And you want to get there. You've got to come out of the world, come in through the gate, and the first thing that you're going to see, the first piece of furniture, if you will, in the tabernacle is uh, the uh, brazen altar, and that's where the animals are sacrificed. Their blood, if it was for a sin atonement, would be caught in a basin. Uh, here is the brazen laver where the priest... Oh, the camera just fell. Hope you didn't get hurt in that fall. Let's see if we can get it set back up here for you. You fell off the stand. We had a guy in Sunday school fall one time. And, uh, but it wasn't from the tape coming loose. Okay, hopefully you survived that. That's a blooper. We'll just leave that in there. Uh, but here is the uh, brazen laver, and uh, the priest would cleanse with that. That's a uh, picture of confession of sin. You cannot approach to God. Uh, even if the sacrifice has been made, you're not going to be able to approach God if you have sin in your life. Now I'm going to remove these uh, different curtains here. And every one of the models that you'll see, everybody will have a little bit different uh, take on what they look like and things like that. But size and dimensions are all given. Even as Paul mentioned about the uh, cherubim on the mercy seat, we can't speak of them particularly now because we just don't have the full picture of it. But here is the uh, structure itself, if you will. Here is where you would come in. And on this side over here is where you would have the lampstand, table of showbread, which hidden there. I'll give you an overview of it here in just a moment. And then you have the uh, altar of incense, and then you have the pillars that are holding the veil, and then behind that is the most holy place uh, of where the mercy seat in the uh, 
uh, Ark of the Covenant is. Okay, so hold on now. We won't let you fall, and uh, we'll try to give you an overview here. Uh, so you're seeing that. Boy, that's probably hard for you to see, making you turn your head while you're there. And so we'll come up over here, and uh, you'll see down in here is the lampstand, and uh, here is the uh, table of... Um, uh, table of showbread, and then you have the altar of incense, and then in this back portion here, uh, you have the uh, mercy seat. Uh, so this total structure is uh, 30 cubits and 20 cubits here, 10 cubits here, 10 cubits wide, uh, or which would be um, uh, 45 feet, and it's uh, 30 feet here, 15 feet here. Uh, this is 150 uh, feet or 100 cubits, 50 cubits wide or 75 feet uh, wide. So hopefully that's a good overview for you there. And I uh, apologize once again. Hopefully you didn't get a head headache from falling off the uh, camera stand there. And uh, we'll begin part two. And uh, we'll be right back. Join us in part two.